This video will help you understand Lesson 6 and Lesson 7 of Module 6. Um, we've been working a lot with data distributions, displaying them, and um, looking at what it really means. And I am not sure students understand why we actually do what we do. So that's what I started with today. Um, this is a dot plot on grades on the last quiz. Okay, and I had kids start by finding the center of the data. And we've been teaching the kids to find the center of the data. They cross out their dots on the dot plot until they get to the center. And at which time they should be able to, and most of them can say, okay, the center of this data distribution is 83. But then if you ask students, well, why are you finding the center? They're really unsure as to why they do it. So I kind of taught that in today's class. I said, the reason we do this the typical value of this is 83. So I, I've encouraged students to start making statements about it. So from this dot plot, students should be able to conclude or make a statement. The typical grade on the last test was an 83. And that's really where I'd like students to go. That is, um, using the center of the data really can help you summarize a graph or a data distribution display when you look at it. This type of center is called the median, but there's many types of centers. And we said, okay, and I taught them another measure of center today, and it's called the mean, which is also known as the average. However, I didn't teach them how to find the average right away. Um, I really want them to look at the pictorial understanding of um, mean, and I taught them that picture in two different ways today. The first way is called fair share, and it's a pretty easy topic if you think about it. Um, you take all of the data that you are given. For example, in this case, how many hours do you babysit a month? Kelly babysat for five hours, Roxy two, or Roxy 3, Sue 2, Beth did 9, and Anne did, Anne did 1. You take all of this data and you try to fairly trade it amongst all of the five people. So I showed the kids today, okay, you really want to take away from Beth because she has the most and fairly share that with Anne. I'm going to take another from Beth and share it again with Anne. I'll take one with from Beth and share it with Sue. I'm going to take one from Beth and share it with Roxy. I'm going to take one from Sue, or one from Beth, and share it with Sue. Now, the next highest is Kelly. I'm going to take hers, and I am going to share it with Anne. Okay? So, if you think about this, okay, um, all of the data that was presented in that is now shared fairly. And you can make a statement based on this. The typical babysitter spends four hours a month babysitting. Okay, so that was that was a fairly easy concept for them, and if I can go all the way back, let me reboot this. I wish I had written it the first time, but let me go back to our original, okay? There's an, another way to do that. Uh, after the visual representation, I went back to the kids and I said, okay, there's another way to do this, okay? Mean really is the average. When you uh, add all these data points together, you get a sum of 20. Then you have to divide it by the one, two, three, four, five numbers that you added. Hmm. I gave you the answer. 20 divided by five. On average, the typical babysitter spends four hours a month babysitting, and that is another way to measure center. But I like that fair share visual for the students. I also showed them Another visual. Another way to think about balance, and we used a ruler. 
and a number line. And we started talking pennies on a ruler and being able to balance them. So I told the students, if you placed a penny on nine on your ruler and you wanted it to balance at seven or you wanted a mean of seven, where would you put the penny on the other side of your balancing point? Okay, and the students and I talked and they were able to see that nine was up two from their mean or plus two. So if they wanted something to balance on seven, they would have to go two in the other direction or minus two. These are called deviations. They are how far a number, how many units a number is away from your mean. And if you look at your deviations, they're opposites of each other, which we've studied a ton this year. And they actually cancel each other out for a sum of zero. It's commonly also called a zero pair. So we did a couple like that. I'll do one more with you. Um, and I'm going to amp it up a little bit. I'm going to put three pennies now. Okay, I said to the students, okay, let's balance at five. Let's say you have a penny at seven and a penny at eight. Where would your third penny go if you wanted it to balance? So the kids are like, hmm, this one's a little bit different. Okay, if you count for seven, seven is up two or positive two from your mean. Eight is up one, two, three from your mean. So if you add these two deviations together, you get a total of positive five which means that your other penny has to be minus five. Okay, so your other penny would be minus five from your mean or a deviation of negative five, so your penny would go at zero. So that is what we spent a lot of time on today. And the last one I went over at the end of class, they had a lot of problems with, which I'm excited about because means they're learning and growing and making mistakes. I have this stop plot. It is summarizing the ages of summer school students. So I asked the kids from the stop plot to find the average or mean age from the data provided. And a lot of them missed it. We have three tens that need to be added together. We have one eleven and we have three twelves. Okay, so I had the students take out their calculators. Hopefully they're doing some mental math. 10, 20, 30, plus 11, plus 12, 24, 36. That is a sum of 77. That is not a typical average age of summer school students. You actually have to divide it now by the number of dots there are. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 77 divided by 11 is going to give you a 77 divided by 7 is going to give you a quotient of 11. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the videos. I hope it was very understandable for you on lessons 6 and 7. Um, and I hope you the educating questions were easy for you. And have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, fifth period class. I said that four times already. I'll see you Monday. Have a great weekend.